This is an example of what was shot in S-Log3 or Picture Profile 9. Now, one thing you'll notice about picture profiles in Sony cameras is that the higher the number, the flatter the image is, but the more dynamic range you'll have. In other words, the more room for error. So what you're seeing here on the left is called a lumetri scope. And the lumetri scope is not like a histogram. Some people kind of confuse it and go, oh, it's like a histogram. It's not. What this shows is the red, green, and blue luminance levels of the different areas of the photos. You'll see that this is in motion, right? Because the, the package is in motion. Nothing else is staying the same. So this is a graphical representation of um, the luminance of the different values, red, green, and blue. So, in other words, what it's showing you is we have got a lot of room up here uh, before we start to hit 100 or complete white. And we also haven't hit the bottom yet, which is complete black. So that is the strength of S-Log or Cine 1 or the other picture profiles that allow you uh, to have a flatter gamma. And so the question quickly becomes, well, why would I do that? You do that so you'll have more color grading options. Having said that, learning how to color grade is typically an entire course in film school. So um, I always shoot in at least S-Log 2. Uh, S-Log 3 in challenging situations where we've got a bright window uh, in the background. But it's quite easy for me to see how it'll color grade because the Sony cameras have what's called Gamma Display Assist, uh, which allows you to see the normalized photos that's not as flat like this. And some of the monitors that directors get also have uh, a display assist. So this is something that's quite familiar in Hollywood. A lot of the directors of photography that are very used to shooting in flat gamma curves are used to this and they know what they're getting. This is a bit underexposed because as I move the exposure, you'll see that the entire lumetri display goes up kind of more toward the middle although now we still have the problem of this looking extremely flat. So there's a couple of ways that we could fix that. One is, of course, we could then take the contrast and watching the scope over here, increase the contrast so that we can start to see it looking kind of more human being like. Um, we can take the highlights up. We can take the shadows up or down. And you start to see that we're seeing something that looks a little bit more normal see that here so now it's actually starting to look kind of like a, a normal thing now watch on the bottom here when i pull the shadows down watch how it starts to crunch like a pile up on the freeway when it starts to crunch there see when they start to pile up on each other that's when i know i'm starting to lose detail in the blacks so that's kind of what we don't want and the same thing with the highs if we take the highlights and we start to bring them up and we see them start to cram into each other like you're seeing there now they're starting to cram then you've you've lost yourself um some of the highlight detail so that's something that we don't want to avoid this is something that you would just look at you know hopefully through a good, good monitor and you would change maybe you know a little bit more warmth maybe add a little bit more saturation or something like that uh change the the temperature um and then you know bring something in a little bit closer now, another really super quick and easy way to do it is to import a LUT. And the LUTs are available online at uh, the Sony website for S-Log. Um, there's a lot of them. They're everywhere, but this is the Sony look profile here. I'll just go ahead and choose this one to show you as an example. And then, well, actually, you know, before I do that, let me just reset everything. Okay, so now we go, blech, yuck. And I'm going to go down here, and I'm going to, pull in one of the Sony published uh, LUT tables, and here we have it. Of course, now it looks low. Well, that's because it was underexposed, right? To fix it real quick, we'll just go to Auto, and you'll see now we're getting very, very close. And you'll see right here that we've nicely filled the uh, scope. And this is something that you'll see in Auto uh, Contrast or auto tone in Photoshop is that the Photoshop will tend to try to fill the histogram so that the whites are completely present. At least something's completely white. At least something's completely black. And sometimes that's not natural. Sometimes that's not exactly what you want. Um, but in a situation like this, I might change the color temperature just a little bit. 
uh, to make it just a little bit more kind of normal and maybe bring up the saturation or down, whatever, you know. But see, now this right here is starting to look like it was a normally shot sequence. Now that's a very, very quick uh, and dirty way of doing it. Okay, so that is how S-Log works. Again, uh, and to a lesser extent, S-Log 2, Cine 1, the um, flatter gammas, the flatter gamma curves give you much more room to play with as far as exposure or color grading goes, but also looks worse when you're shooting it. So the take-home lesson is um, if you're if you're shooting cinema and you know that you're going to have expert color grading by someone who really knows what they're doing, then you will benefit from the uh, the flatter gamma curves. If you're not, then go ahead and stick to picture profile zero, because in most cases, except for say for example, you got very very blown out windows or things like that, you probably don't need a whole bunch of uh, dynamic range unless you're going to later color grade for a look or some kind of cinematic feel. You'll always want to be in a flatter uh, gamma curve so that you can have maximum data uh, with which to color grade later for your editor.